Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Carlos Betraga Pizan, RTRVI. Welcome back to my channel, Lazy Bones Radiology. In today's episode, I'll be covering the bones of the body, general features, and the different classification of the bones. Before we start, don't forget to press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends so we can all learn together. Let's begin! In radiology, especially radiography, the main focus of our field is taking diagnosable image of the skeletal system. In the human body, there are 206 primary bones, which provide the frame and support of the body. Muscles attach to bones with tendons, which allow the basis for mechanical movement. Also, the skeletal system helps protect internal organs from external trauma, produces red and white blood cells, and stores minerals, for example, calcium and phosphorus, and houses the red and yellow marrow. The following definitions were gathered from Merrill's Atlas of Radiographic Positioning and Procedures. This is a series that I used when I was a student, so I highly recommend it. Let's begin. Skeletal Groups The skeleton splits up into two groups, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Let's start with the axial skeleton. This is the skeletal group that supports and protects the head and the trunk of the body. This group consists of 80 bones throughout the skull, neck, thorax, and the vertebral column. Next is the appendicular skeleton. This is the skeletal system that allows the body to move. This group consists of 126 bones throughout the shoulder girdle, upper limbs, lower limbs, and the pelvic girdle. General bone features. Bones are made of multiple layers, so it's important to have a basis of how the skeletal framework is constructed. There are eight sections that I will cover in detail. The periosteum. This is a tough fibrous connective tissue that covers the bony surface except articulating surface. This tough fibrous connective tissue is filled with nerve endings and blood vessels. Compact bone is a strong dense outer layer while the endosteum is a thin tissue lining that outlines the medullar cavity. Next is the medullar cavity, which is the central cavity which contains the trabeculi filled with yellow marrow within long bones. Here's some examples. As you can see here, this is the compact bone inside here of the medullar cavity. And in between those two is the endosteum. Next is the spongy bone. This is the inner portion of the less dense part of the bone which has a red marrow concentration within the section. It is important not to confuse that the medullar cavity is filled with yellow marrow while the spongy bone at the ends of the bone are filled with red marrow. Do not get these confused. Next is the trabeculi, which are the within this soft spongy bone and are the speculated network of interconnecting spaces. Next is the articulating cartilage or the cartilage that helps glide and assist in the movement of the within the joint space. The epiphyseal line and plate are at the ends of the long bones. It forms a line when it's fully calcified and the bone has stopped growing and is known as a growth plate when they are still growing. Let's look at some examples. This is the soft spongy bone filled with trabeculi and red bone marrow at the end of the long bones. Here are the articulating surfaces. And right here, these are the epiphyseal lines, which are almost calcified, but are still growing, as you can see. On the right-hand side, these are the growth plates that are not fully calcified. So these are the plates, while in the middle, they're starting to calcify and become the line. Classifications of bones. There are 206 bones in the human body, but they are not all the same. Bones are classified by their shape. So for example, there's the long bones, short bones, flat bones, irregular, and sesamoid. Let's start with the long bones. These are long cylindrical shaft or the body with two enlarged rounded ends. As you can see here, this is an example of the femur, which is a long bone with two rounded edges or two rounded ends. They're only found in the limbs or extremities, 
whose primary function is to provide support. Examples include femur, humerus, and the tibia. These are just some x-rays showing you long bones. As you can see, they're very lengthy with two rounded ends. Next is the short bones, which are mainly cancellous bones containing red marrow and have a thin outer layer of compact bone. They vary in, in size. For example, here on the right hand side, these are the carpal bones. These small little bones allow minimal flexibility within a short distance. So examples include the carpal bones and the tarsal bones. Here are some examples of your carpal bones and your tarsal bones. All different sizes, but they're all short bones. Flat bones. These are two tables of compact bone with a small space between them containing cancellous bone filled with red marrow known as dipoli. Dipoli is the name of the red marrow filled cancellous bony tissues within the flat bones. Flat bones provide protection and broad surface which allows for muscle attachment. For example, the cranium, sternum, and scapula. Here's some x-rays showing the flat bones of the cranium, and here's a scapula. See how flat they are? Irregular bones. These bones are called irregular because of their, sh of their shape. It's very strange and do not fit the same classifications as the previous ones. As you can see here on the right hand side, this is the sphenoid bone within the skull. The bones have compact surfaces and cancellous bone with red marrow. Examples include the vertebra, bones in the pelvis, and the face. As you can see here on the lateral skull, you can see the different shapes and sizes of the facial bones, and also here in the pelvis, the irregular bones, and also in the vertebral bodies. Sesamoid bones. These bones are small and have oval sized shapes. As you can see here on the right hand side, there's the patella. Most commonly found inside or beside tendons. Their exact role is not fully understood according to the literature, but they are believed to be the bones that alter the directions of muscles as they are pulled and relaxed and decrease the friction between bones. Hint, sesamoid, think of sesame seeds, very small rounded seeds. Examples, as you can see here, the patella is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. Others are beneath the metacarpal phalangeal articulations, and the other one is the metatarsal phalangeal articulations. Here are some examples. This is a lateral patella, and you can see here the small sesamoid bones in the hand. Bone marking and depressions. The final stretch. As bones are shaped differently, each bone has a certain characteristic or landmark that we have to be familiar with in this field. As you can see, there are processes and projections which are structures that emerge or stick out from the rest of the bony structures. As you can see here, the coronoid process and the olecranon process of the ulna stick out of the regular bone, while depressions on the other hand are concaves or holes that sink within the bony structure as you can see here in the semilunar notch of the ulna. Processes and projections. Condyles, these are rounded processes at the end of articulating extremities, as you can see here. Next is the epicondyles, which project above the condyles. Coronoid and coracoid are beak-like or crown-like processes. As you can see here on the anterior surface of the scapula, this is known as the coracoid process. While on the ulnar, this is the coronoid process. Crest are ridge-like processes, for example, here in the iliac, the iliac crest, in the intertrochanterial crest. Lines are less prominent than ridges or crest. As you can see here on the tibia, this is a line where major muscles are attached to. Head is an extended end of the long bone, which articulates, as you can see here, this is the humerus, which articulates with the scapula to make the ball and socket joint. Horn are horn-like processes 
within the bone. As you can see here on the hyoid bone, or the Adam's apple, there's little horn-like projections that we're able to identify. Next is the malleolus, or club-like processes. In the ankle, you have two. You have a medial and a lateral malleolus. Next, you have the protuberance, which are projected parts or prominences. As you can see here, this is the occipital protuberance. If you feel in the back of your head, you can feel that knot. That's the occipital protuberance. Spine. These are sharp processes. For example, here, this is the spinous process of the cervical spine. Next is the styloid, which is a long and pointed process, as you can see here. Trochanter is either the two large rounded and elevated processes that join in junction with the neck of the femur. As you can see here, this is the greater trochanter and this is the lesser trochanter. Next is tubercle, which is a small rounded and elevated process. As you can see here in the humerus, this is the greater tubercle. Next is a tuberosity, which is a large rounded and elevated process. As you can see here, this is a lateral knee and you can see the tibial tuberosity. Depressions, a fissure. This is a cleft or deep groove within the bone. Foramen is a hole in the bone, which is a transmission of blood vessels and nerves. As you can see here in the pelvis, you have the obturator foramina, and then you have the pelvic floor with a large foramen. There's also a big one in the skull known as the foramen magnum. Fossa is a pit or phobia or hollow space. As you can see here, this is known as the glenoid fossa or the rotating cuff of the shoulder. Next is a groove, which is a shallow line channel, as you can see here in the posterior aspect of the skull. Next is the meatus, which is a tube-like passageway running within the bone. As you can see here, this is the meatus. It can either be the external or internal acoustic meatus. Notch. These are indentations into a border of a bone. These are the clavicular notch, and right in the middle is the jugular notch. Sinus. This is a recess or groove, cavity, or hollow space. As you can see here in the lateral skull, you can see the sinuses of the skull and the facial bones. Finally, the sulcus, which is a ferro trench or fissure-like depression. This concludes today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned a lot about the two different types of groups, the different types of bones, and all of the different landmarkings that you will have to know in this field. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to press that like button and subscribe to the channel. And also you can follow me on Instagram. Thank you very much. Have a great day.